Hi guys, Andy here, and welcome to a visual novel called Strawberry Daiquiri. Um, no idea what this game is about, but it popped up on my uh, feed to play, and I thought, hey, you know what? Let's let's play something while the internet's out, and because it's not 1 a.m. and I have insomnia, <laughs> so <laughs> we're gonna play this game. Um, fun little fact: my very first alcoholic drink was a strawberry daiquiri, and it is fucking delicious. Uh, let's just start, shall we? It's another quiet night at the bar. I am cleaning some glasses and trying to make the time pass by faster. On my left is Geary, the drunkard, who comes by nearly seven days a week. He stays here more hours than one with a normal job would, but I don't ask questions about where the money comes from. The rest of the bar is basically empty, save for one more quiet customer hiding in the back corner. <sighs> It sure would be convenient if someone would come in right now, sit right in front of me, and tell very interesting stories that I could listen in on. The door swings open, and a man with dark skin and long black curly hair sits down at the bar right in front of me. It's a regular. His name is Antonio, and he always comes by on Tuesday nights and asks for the same thing. Antonio, it's great to see you again. You too, bartend. I'll take a recommendation, and whatever the bloke who ends up sitting next to me wants. Gotcha, the usual. He nods. Antonio takes a drag from his electronic cigarette. The air around him is filled with the scent of lemons. I fucking hate vapes. E6, whatever, it's the same shit. <laughs> Smoking tobacco inside was banned about a hundred years ago, but electronic cigarettes are allowed as long as they are filled with fluid approved by the FDA. Antonio's liquid has already been approved. Last time it was pomegranate, right? Oh, I fucking love pomegranates. You have a good memory. I'll pick you out something lemony. I turn back and begin preparing him a lemon drop, squeezing fresh lemon juice into the glass and rimming the edges with sugar. Oh, I miss drinking. I can't drink anymore, uh, whoever's watching. Uh, long story. I turn to hand Antonio his drink and the door opens again. An unfamiliar man with light skin and nearly white hair enters and takes a seat next to Antonio. Ah, his man of tonight. I set the drink in front of Antonio. I'll have one Bloody Mary, please. Antonio puts his vape down and takes a sip of his drink. He puckers a little bit, but doesn't say anything. I take my Bloody Mary mitts and shake it with vodka. I squeeze a small wedge of lemon and lime into the cup. I have placed it in front of the white-haired man. Courtesy of Mr. Antonio here. Antonio glances towards the white-haired man. Good choice. Oh, thank you, sir. Can I do anything for you? Listen to the ramblings of an old man. Classic Antonio. This is just what I needed for the night. Maybe he'll tell some stories I haven't heard yet. Of course I'd love to. Tell me your name first. As the bartender said, I'm Antonio. Bit of a dated name, isn't it? Classics never die, as they say. That's why you ordered a Bloody Mary, right? You're not wrong, and mine's even more dated. I'm Orion. Nice to meet you. God, that is... No, let's not name people that anymore. Dated and uncommon. I like it. Reminds me of the stars for obvious reasons. So Antonio, what would you like to talk about? I go back to washing more glasses as I listen in. Hmm, I've got lots of stories. Ask about something you'd like to hear about, and I'm psh, I've surely got something for it. Well, Orion looks at Antonio's face. His face is pretty standard for a human, except for one thing. It's the same thing as drinking buddies always comment on. How'd you get the eye? Yep, there it is. One of Antonio's eyes was clearly robotic. Uh, was a clearly robotic red cybernetic eye. How'd you get yours? Orion's eyes were completely natural looking, fully white with dark irises and black pupils. Maybe Antonio was tiring of this question. I was born with them. Me too. That's not much of a story, is it? I'm sure I'd have one if I could remember back to being born. 
Well then, tell me about your profession. Any fun stories? I've been retired for a decade, but my memories are strong. Here he goes. I was a robotics engineer. Weren't that drone intelligence inc? Sure you've heard of him, at least. I don't know where that little voice came from. <laughs> uh, when I started, they were just starting an, an, on Android experimentation. I helped with the coding in a, of the artificial intelligence. It started about as well as you'd expect. Uh, well, maybe not what you'd expect, because they're rather advanced now. But back then, you could easily distinguish an android from a real living being. They all treaded in the uncanny valley. Uncanny valley. Something was missing. Uh, yeah, I like my uh, brain cells that I can't freaking read. So we took a break from trying to make the humanoid robots and started a bit lower. Domestic animals for people who had allergies. You know all about it by now. Back then, it still wasn't a new concept. Way back when, before we were even born, they had those things. Very limited technology-wise. Yes, and they were called Furbies. Battery operated. Can you believe it? Yes, I can. I still have my Furby. I gotta figure out where I have it. I think it's, it's in the storage room. It's the King Furby. He had like a little uh, royal crown and a royal velvet cape on him. I loved it. Uh, batteries. No, I can't. Yep, nowadays batteries are only used for retro devices. I think I only use batteries for my camera and my uh, remote. That's it. Collectors, if you will. I've heard of collectors. Mostly historians. My grandfather actually collected old toys like that. I've seen an old-timey robotic dog in person before. It didn't even have any fur on it. Wow, that's crazy. Indeed, pretty much every robot made to imitate a living creature has fur or hair of some kind. Antonio continues his story. After a few years, we made dogs and cats that were nearly indistinguishable from real pets. The only differences were, well, they didn't eat, piss, or shit, or they typically outlive their owner. Aww. I want my animals to outlive me. <laughs> that's a damn <laughs> fat... I would rather they, they um, outlive me. So long as they weren't destroyed. They were fluffy and loving. Truly great partners. Just like they are today. But there is one that was a bit different than the others. Dog droid 01660. God, I couldn't... Oh God. Yeah, I can't read. <laughs> Not that the number really adds much to the story, just like to add a little bit of flavor. The owner, Mabel, came to the company one day after purchase, asked us a few vague questions. Is it supposed to, um... Miss Mabel, you can tell me, it's all confidential. I, uh... How does Sitsti open doors? The dogs were given the ability to open doors and contact emergency services if you're trapped or in pain. Okay, but I guess what I'm trying to ask is, he entered while you were having private times? Yes, I know he's just a robot, but still. They're not supposed to do that. Bring him in and I'll work out the bug. So she brought him in. I worked on him for weeks, but couldn't find a single thing wrong with him. He shouldn't have been acting up. So I took him to my superior. Careless of him, really. Can you guess what happened? Uh, suddenly, Geary, the drunkard on the left, raises his face from the table and slurs out a line. He was a dog. Geary, stop eavesdropping. I'm talking to Orion here, not you. When will you buy me a drink again? Oh no, not this again. When you've done a fraction of the work I've done. Zero is still is still a fraction. Actually, it's not. I could go into it, but I quickly place a drink in front of Gary. Here, Gary, have a vodka and tonic on me. It's actually just ice water with lime. Boys gotta sober up sometime. You, you understand me. Thank you. 
He takes a sip. This isn't very strong, but I like it. I like it lots. Good night. <laughs> he slaps his face on the counter. I really like the thud. <laughs> Thank you. No problem. Please continue. Gary, that drunkard was right. I mean, he's heard the story before, but, you know. I walked in and saw my supervisor passed out at his desk, a fucking VR mask on his face, and a live stream running on his on his desktop. You'd think he'd have closed it before passing the fuck out, but I guess he didn't want to miss anything. What I saw on his screen was a video feed of my office. I reached over him, rewound back several days, and found Miss Mabel in a compromising position. You know what that means, right? He was controlling one of the robot robotic dogs remotely and spying on this unassuming woman. Sick fuck. What really set though was that my arm brushed into him and he jostled awake. Oh shit. Yeah, that's really fucked up. Oh shit is right. Now at this point, it appears that there were a couple of things I could have done. Blow the whistle or keep quiet. You think so, right? With my boss at my side, obviously panicking that his top employee and arguably his right-hand man found out this industry-destroying secret. So what'd you end up doing? Actually, I ain't have a choice. This thing. He taps his red eye. Records everything and uploads it to his server. Wait, so it's... well recorded. It got uploaded and quickly discovered by whoever was monitoring it at the time. Huge ordeal. New CEO and everything. Oh, so that's why. Yep, as you probably guessed it, it did get covered up. It was written off to the public as a general security issue rather than what it actually was. A man who wanted to be a dog. It, uh, excuse me? I thought you were going to call him a peeping Tom or a sick fuck as you did earlier. Well, that too. He overset the boundaries and went too far. He got too greedy. But if he didn't do what he did, this would have never come out, and he might still be, uh, he might still be playing pat with women who didn't consent. Are you implying that now he's playing pat with women who do consent? Fuck if I know. I haven't heard from him since he got fired. It's always an interesting story, even if I've heard it a dozen times. Look, that's my first time hearing this story. What the fuck? Now, I want to hear the story of what happened to your eye. I've only heard this one once. It's hiding. First, let me buy you another drink. Oh, you don't have to. Don't worry, it's no bother. Here, try a daiquiri. Bartend! He taps the table twice. Oh, I see. He's playing this game again. Okay! And a cocktail for me. I prepare and serve the special order daiquiri for Orion and a cocktail for Antonio. Looks chilly. Sip it with a straw, otherwise it might hurt your teeth, or stain them at least. Orion takes a tentative sip. Oh my, it's delicious. What flavor is this anyway? Strawberry. Oh, Antonio. You liar. <laughs> I guess I've just never had it before. It worked? Fascinating. Orion takes another sip. Anyway, your story about your eye. It might sound like I'm rambling, but it's more fun if I give all the contents, right? I've got plenty of time. Go ahead. It all started with Earl. I was still working at the company. In fact, this was right after the dog thing happened. We had been seeing each other for a few weeks. He was a doctor, his brother a car mechanic. Uh, well, word got out about my company, and Earl ain't want nothing to do with me anymore. I don't understand the sudden, like, the sudden, uh, dialect changing. It's really awkward. Oh, that's a shame. See, well, he was involved in some potentially unethical practices and didn't want my eye to record any of it. That's when I got a call from Bob, his brother. 
Now, normally I wouldn't mess around with more than one family member, but they were twins and I missed her all pretty bad. How sweet of you. He tried tinkering with my eye, but his expertise lay elsewhere. So we said our goodbyes and I wandered the streets looking for an answer. Then I met a homeless man named Amos in the back alley next to a dumpster digging around for some food. He was actually pretty handsome once I got him a shower and got him clean off drugs. He told me the name of his drug dealer. And that's how I met Steven. I'm starting to see why you warned me about the rambling. I did warn you though, but it's all context. While I did pal around with Steven a bit, I was never a user. Don't like the stuff. I did get mixed up with his partner though, Sophie. A woman? Yes, his girlfriend. I started hanging out with her pretty frequently. She knew the streets better than he did and found him, him most of his clientele. And here we are at the last part of the story. I really want the story to end with him. At last. At last. The end of the story. All of these people led me on this crucial train of events, which led me to Banks. Oh yeah, that guy. Banks. Oran perked up a little at the name. Does he know the guy? Don't get your hopes up. It's a code name, and he's long gone. Antonio said this with some slight hostility in his voice. Oh, I see. Banks was a back alley surgeon, a cool looking guy. His bottom half was like a giant spider last I saw him. Also, I apologize if you hear a train in the background. <laughs> oh, I've heard of people like that. Kind of, kind, kind of like how I'm half robot, half person. Noticeable at first glance. Yeah, your arm and part of your face look really metallic. I like it. Thanks. Antonio ignores me and moves on with the story. Wow, rude. Banks specializes in removing unwanted augmentations. He just required some special payment. Gary raises his head again and slurs some more words. Did you kill someone, Tony? Gary, no. But maybe I will if you keep interrupting like this. I'm sorry. <laughs> he lays his head back onto his arms. <laughs> I fucking love the thud. Good. Orion rolls his eyes. So what'd he want? He wanted an augmentation for an augmentation. Did you do it? Wait, dumb question. You just said before that your eye doesn't record anymore. But I don't see any other augmentations on you. What'd you get? Can't show you in polite company. He glances in my direction. Oh boy, Antonio's talking about his dick again. But if you want to come home with me tonight, I'll show you. Maybe you can take it for a spin. Oh, Antonio's trying to get some. Orion, clearly taken back by the sudden proposition, sits up straight on his stone and blushes. Uh, I, uh, I mean, do you really want someone like me to... First things first. Antonio takes a drag off his electronic cigarette and blows it in Orion's direction. And there he goes again with a special version of the Turing test. Smells good, right? Orion sniffs the air. Smells just like the drink you gave me earlier. Strawberries, right? Antonio raises his eyebrows. Knew it. Knew what? You know, Orion, your hair keeps getting in your eyes. Antonio leans flustering Orion. Shut up, chair. <laughs> o R 1 O N. God damn it. Are you fucking serious? Oh, look, a code. Man, they didn't give you a crea creative name, huh, bud? I'm sorry, I would have told you, I just, I'm not allowed. And you have a progressive smell slash taste adapter. It's strange how they never even tasted out basic flavors on you. 
I mean, you didn't even know lemons are strawberries. By the way, the flavor I gave you before is lemon, so it fits that part of your database up. I should have known something was off when it wasn't even red. I've seen strawberries in pictures before, but I don't drink very often. I'm sorry to deceive you, sir. Antonio and I have an agreement. It's okay, I understand. Bad experiences with androids and such, with him working at Joan Intelligence. So, are you a spy? Trying to figure out some info on banks? I told you, I don't know a thing. No, I'm not. I'm not even that type of model. I, I work at a nursing home. Antonio's face softens. He smiles at Orion and looks him in the eyes. Is it getting warmer in here? Oh, please tell me more. Okay. I'm a care type android model. My smell slash taste is progressive because, well, the nursing home has all sorts of smells. And by tinkering with my senses, they allow me to associate what humans typically think of bad smells as good smells. Oh, that's a great idea. I wish I came up with that. You got camera eyes like I did. So anxious after all that. Yes, but mine are only on during work for magical, for med magical, medical emergencies. They don't make them like yours anymore. Mine recognize when a patient is suffering and immediately call emergency services. In fact, it's a good thing you got yours removed because they're illegal now. I'm sure you know that, though. Nope, haven't followed the news in a long time. Not too concerned about law breaking anyway. He's ballsy, saying stuff like that so casually to people he barely knows. So, if you ain't allowed to tell anyone up front about being an android, which is fucking weird, by the way. You're wondering why my coat's written on my eye, just barely covered up by my hair, aren't you? Yeah, I am. It's a common place for a code stance, but if you're supposed to hide it. I work with some really old people in a pretty closed off environment. Many of them have dementia, Alzheimer's, all sorts of problems. So they programmed me to hide my code in plain sight. But if someone outside of the facility wants to know, they can just ask. Or, you know, get close to me like you did just now. Sorry about that. As you can guess, I've had some bad experiences. It's okay. I really don't mind. Oh, I have one more question for you, then I'll answer yours properly. Mine? About me uh, going home with you. Oh, look, your brains are in your eyes again. Antonio leans in and places his hand on Orion's forehead. Aww, that's adorable. Let me screenshot this real quick. Okay, screenshotted. <laughs> your hand feels nice. So what's your question then? Um, so you said earlier that you were born with dry, but is that really true? As far as I know, I've had this eye ever since I can remember. That being said, my parents also had them. They were employees at the same company I worked at, and it was a requirement. So they had your life planned out before you even got the chance. Yeah, too bad I fucked it up for them. I wonder if we would have met if you hadn't. And me, the bartender. I am still here. Just like I fucking am. And what a shame that would be. Never would have gotten the chance to invite you back to my place. So, if you'll have me, an android built for caregiving and not at all for pleasure, I'll come home with you tonight. You're good just the way you are. We can work something out, I'm sure. Antonio turns to me. I'll put it all on your tab like usual. They both smile at me and get ready to leave. I take a glance at the watch on my wrist. It's been two hours. We'll be closing up soon. Oh, that's adorable. I fucking love this art style. Antonio and Orion leave the bar, their arms around each other, and their empty glasses on the table. Get a screenshot of that to you. I call out after them. See you next week. And 
that was it. I was kind of expecting more, uh, to be honest. But yeah, that is Strawberry Daiquiri. The, uh, it's mostly a kinetic visual novel, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, uh, hopefully I can upload this today, Friday. Hopefully Monday, if my internet comes back on, we'll see. Hopefully at some point this little video will be up. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, I plan to do some more uh, Boo Brigade stuff with my uh, friends. And uh, hopefully some more visual novels. I really do miss uh, recording visual novels. They're so fun. Uh, this game is super duper adorable, though. Anyway, I should probably leave you all. Um, have a good day.